So I am Alberto Planas. I, I am part of the cloud team for SUSE these days, but I started in 2012 and joined to the OpenSUSE team. So we are going to talk about uh, some numbers, some statistics that we did in, in OpenSUSE, and we, we are going to try to make a picture of how is OpenSUSE today. Uh, this is the second time that we did this, did exercise. We the first time that we did that was in 2013. So three years is okay to to see the difference between how we evolve. That is quite nice. Yeah. So this is more, more or less the thing that we are going to talk about. Uh, we are going to talk about on loss, the number of installations that we have now, the uh, how evolves the architectures and the and the medium. I mean, medium is uh, how the people usually install our distribution. Uh, I have some uh, a very small slide about the countries. Where are the people that is using uh, 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 OpenSUSE? And some to do stuff that uh, I think that is a good opportunity to address in, in some event like that. So let's talk about onloads. I mean, there is a methodology that I use it for every kind of analysis. I I, I use. This, uh, these steps. Basically, we, we have a very, very huge amount of log files, and they are very slow to analyze and to process. So what I did is to split the, the task in three big chunks that uh, uh, we address uh, separately. The first task was, uh, okay, we have a raw text. We are going to convert this raw text in something that we can easily query and iterate over that. Uh, this is the slowest part with different. So for this task, we use uh, Berkeley DB. Berkeley DB is an embedded database that is, is quite nice because there is a different mode of uh, working. We use a, a queue approach. So we have a single file, and we add chunks of the same site in the file. So it's very easy to add and very fast to, to recover. In this step, we didn't do any kind of analysis. We take the line. We split in chunks and put in the database. This is super fast, so super slow. I mean, three weeks of processing, and the net result was two terabytes of compressed database for uh, since 2009 until 2016, until May of 2016. Uh, I take the, the the opportunity to remove some redundancy, so I. I, instead of storing the, the raw string, I use MD5 and a separate database to address that. So I, I try to really to remove redundancy. The real chunk of analysis was in a, in a second step. So basically, I, what I do is iterate over the full uh, time series and using some regular expressions and using some heuristics, try to deduce what is happening in each uh, access that we have. Uh, to our sites. Most of them is not useful for us. It's some guy that was ask, asking questions, but sometimes Zipper is doing a very interesting job, so I try to recognize that and, 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 and extract some information for there. This was uh, quite fast. It's only two days of processing. I spanned like 10 machines doing that, so I have a script that is filling 10 machines with uh, chunks, with the slides of this database, and getting the data in two days, everything is done. Super easy. And the last part is I use uh, Jupyter, that is uh, IPython, the old IPython, and Matplotlib to try to gather some insight or gather some, some nice plottings that this is the thing that we are going to share today. For downloads, so for downloads we want to see what is the people downloading? So we have different, over, the, over our a period of time, since 2009, we have different flavors, we have different architectures, we have different, uh, we, we send uh, our DVD, I mean, we have the DVD, we have the CD, we have the live, we have different ISOs that we distribute, we have torrent. Uh, so what, what is the people downloading? And how many people is downloading that? Uh, to do that, I, I read the logs, I search for something that is an ISO, and using some regular expression, I get the, the, the version 13.2.1, 13.2.2, 11.1, or whatever, the version of the OpenSUSE that is represented in this ISO. 
The good thing is that even we, we are using mirror brain for distribute the proxy, so we are not really serving this ISO. Uh, the, the infra team was super smart and put in such a way that we have a register of every proxy access, we have a register in, 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 in our logs, so we are have a, a real picture of what are the people downloading even if they are not using our, our infra. Ah, yes. And um, for this analysis, I completely remove factory and tumbleweed because this is a different beast. I don't want to, the noise that tumbleweed can provide because tumbleweed is a rolling distro, so the download doesn't provide so much information. Yeah. So this is the first chat that I, we can share. This is a weekly uh, analysis of the downloads. Uh, you can see that there is a huge spike at the beginning that this is 11.1, that is amazing. And after that, we have a very flat view, and every release we have a spike for the distribution. Uh, weekly, a weekly view uh, provides, uh, in my opinion, too much noise. I mean, there is a high frequency uh, spikes that I don't think that provides so much information. So the next step is to uh, create groups of a different time slice, in this case, monthly. Yeah, I think that this is much better. I mean, we can have a, an insight of how, much, how many people are downloading our distribution on a monthly basis. I, I think that there are something that we can see here. The, event, the, the, the very clear thing is that SLE, sorry, uh, OpenSUSE 11.1 uh, 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 was huge. I mean, nothing compares to him we are talking about. 35,000 uh, downloads in, in a month. This is really good. Uh, eventually, we have uh, for OpenSUSE 11, 3, 4, 12, 1, 13, 1, 32, and LIP. We have a flat view that is quite consistent. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's normalized. And we are around uh, 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 400, uh, 400 keys downloaded per per month that this is, uh, is, is what we have. Uh, also, we, I think that we can see here that uh, for every release, we have the spike is a bit, maybe a bit smaller in every release. That doesn't mean that we are half let you user. That means that the people, when there is a new release, they don't go super fast this month and, and, and recover the distribution. So. This is basically the, con the conclusion. So what we can say about this behavior? I mean, not much. I mean, not much. We have uh, 100K downloads per week. That is roughly 400K downloads per month. That I, think, I think that is a very interesting number. This is normalized. This is not in a spike. Uh, I think that we can say that we have a bit less impact in each release, but it's also fair to say that we are very, over the last uh, five years, we have, uh, no, seven years, we have a very stable amount of, of impact in each release. So uh, no matter how we invest in, in announcement, uh, announcing the distribution, that we have this, mostly the same amount of people that during this week or during this month that are going to download the new, uh, version of OpenSUSE. And of course, that 11.1 was something completely different. More interesting installation. Installation refers not exactly users, but something that we can extrapolate from them uh, how many real users do we have today. Uh, there is a, a super cool feature in, in Zipper that every time that Zipper access to the repo, he's providing a random number and new ID that is created for this installation. It's created uh, specifically for this installation. So we can see in the, in the logs how many times we see this computer accessing to our servers. Um, so the, the, the Zipper provides some, some more bits. It's providing, of course, the, 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 the package or the repo that is accessing and the medium that was used to, to install the, 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 the machine. So for this analysis, I decide to, to take what version of the package or what version of the repository is accessing so I can identify if this guy of this machine is accessing to a 32 repo or a 32 package 
at RPN, SRPN, uh, Delta, whatever, I can, I can gather the version from there. And also, also I pair that with the UID that we have. And after that, I create a data set, so a normal set, uh, in a time slide. So for a weekly analysis, what I do is count only once this pair of version UID. So if this guy have 70 access during this period of time, I'm going to, to count that as a one single hit in our database. Uh, there is a version of this analysis with the one that we did uh, three or four years ago. This time, I am not counting access to package to the official distribution or the upgrade. I am counting also access to the repo even there is no uh, effective installation of a new RPM. Why? Because we have, we have Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed is going to be upgraded or we expect that it's going to, the guy is going to upgrade every time that a new snapshot is there. But not, not all the people are going to behave like that. I want to see the difference of the amount of people that are uh, installing Tumbleweed or installing 13.2. Uh, they are not upgrading. They are not uh, 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 installing anything new from, from distribution or for updates and in comparison with the, with the, the previous exercise. Uh, so, uh, and I think that is a more fair comparison. So, if I discover a user in our logs, and this user is not uh, 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 installing anything new, I think that is fair as uh, that we have this user effectively, uh, or this installation is, is, is still there. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, this is weekly. This is super nice. So. We can see several stuff here. Uh, again, we can see tons of noise, so high frequency noise that uh, provide high details of, or a small spike that are difficult to explain. Uh, make a lot of sense in, in to find a spike of new users that we only see during the period of the upgrade, of, of, the, of the new release, sorry. This is the people that are testing OpenSUSE and eventually discarding that. Uh, but we can see something really cool that is in the, this is the left side. In the left side, we can see a, a red uh, area at the very end. This is factory and tumbleweed. Uh, it's the first time that we can see factory and tumbleweed in this kind of chart that comprise like 300 uh, 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 K users uh, uh, that in previous SSI was not visible there. Now we can see that. We, we can also see that uh, we have a period between 12.1 and 13.1 and, and 13 that we are decreasing on the number of users. But something happened, 13.2, Leap, and Factory provide new, new something new that convinced the people to, to, to install and remains with, with us as a, in, as, a, as a use base that we have. And yeah, the linear model here is, uh, is going up. This is the same view monthly. Uh, yeah, we can see, I mean, this is super cool. We, we can see the speed that the people are discarding the previous version and how it's accepting the new version. It's always the same ratio. It's the same, it's like one year that the people are discarding the old version and, and getting the new version. And there is something really cool that we can see here that uh, very long, uh, very long period, very long distribution, like 13.2, and, and we can see that probably in, in Leap, are behaved really well. So the people really want to stay for a year without changing the, the distribution. I think this is super nice. And again, we see factory and, and tamber within the left side that is, is amazing, it's really cool. Yeah, so, some conclusion, really interesting. We have, we can see in the linear model, we can see uh, uh, 300 new installations uh, uh, per week, that is uh, around 1,060 new installations per month, that is, is amazing. This is in the linear model, so if we remove from 13.2 to 
to the past and we take from 13 to, to factory, we have a much, much, much higher rate of, of increase. So we are uh, growing fast and, and more. Uh, we can see this uh, 200, uh, 50k key unique installation in a week that is roughly five key, uh, 500 key unique installation in a month. And that we can see that long cycle release are really good for the project. And yeah, we can see Tumbleweed users. Uh, for Tumbleweed, we have uh, different methods of counting. Uh, this I have two scripts that are counting Tumbleweed users in two different ways. This is every Tumbleweed user that I see in the database is counted. Maybe it's not installing anything, but it's counted. But I have another script that is removing the people that are not, are not installing anything. I, I don't count that as a user. Uh, we can see that uh, we have uh, uh, 60 key users of Tumbleweed, and only the half, 30 key, 30 key users, are updating frequently. This is what it is, is strange, but people are installing Tumbleweed, and during this month, they are not going to, to upgrade anything. And also, it's the distribution by far what that is growing faster. It's really growing really faster. If we check the same amount of users, I mean, if they check the amount of users from the previous year, we have twice as much than one year ago. So really, good job. I mean, was I think that the community and the, the OpenSUSE team and the chairman and everything worked really well and something clicked and, and we have more guys that are very happy with, with, uh, with the, the technology that we provide. That is really nice. Arch and Medium. Uh, this is not very interesting, but let's see. Uh, as I said, a, a zipper provides some small bits of information every time that is accessing the, the repo. Uh, I can deduce, or sometimes I can infer the architecture that this machine is, is using, because the, the architecture is in the repo sometimes, or in the RPM. And zipper is also providing the, the, the medium that was used to, to the first install. So we are going, now in this exercise, we are going to count single hits and during this period of time, and group that hits per week, and check how the mediums and the architectures are behaving. So, in the first chart, we have the medium graph. Uh, we can see that basically the principal way or medium of installation is still the DVD. The second most important one is FTP. That makes completely sense, is the DVD uh, image that we provide and the net install that we provide. So eventually the rest of the distribution are, I mean, we remove live from the live version of, uh, it's not really supported. There are some remains there, but we see that the people is adjusting to the option that we provide. And f for the architecture, it's obviously uh, Intel, the 32 version of Intel is uh, not growing, is very stable is decreasing and is tending to disappear, and is going to be replaced by the 64 version. That is basically what I see here. Uh, there is something really weird in 2012 that is the amount of access, even though there is no difference of users, so it's the same user, but accessing again and again to, the, to this period of time, to the repo, so it's not providing information. I don't know if it's a difference in the way that Zipper works or some crazy stuff that happened during this year, but it's not really important, but it's curious. Uh, yep, it's, this chart is not really informative, but if we combine that with the other two, we can see uh, several stuff. We can see that usually the, the, the user take the DVD, and this is the thing that is, is going to, to use to install. But we can see that uh, after that, they are probably not going to download again the DVD. They are going to use the zipper feature to upgrade the system. So this can explain why the downloads are not very relevant, but we have more and more users, and they are moving from distribution to distribution via zipper update. Countries. Uh, there are a lot of things that we can say about countries. I'm going to say a very little about that, 
Ma mostly about because matter of time, but what I did here, okay, so we have UIDs, we have path, we have medium, we have architecture, but we have also an, an IP. So we take the IP and using this geo IP, uh, try to deduce what country this request comes from. Also, I, I use the trick of uh, UID to discard IPs that come from the same user because this is not relevant for us. And after that, I create an histogram. I have a very long histogram of countries and the number of access that I have. And I make a selection of only the 25 more important countries. I did this exercise in 2009, 10, 11, 12, and in the five first month of 2016. So I, I repeat myself like a lot. And I always have the same chart. There is a difference in the, in the long tail is different, the ordering is different, but this is mostly the, 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 the percentage are mostly equal. So we have a huge success in Germany, which makes sense, we are in Germany. <coughs> but this also indicates something very strange that, something strange, no, this, I think that is showing us an opportunity. If we divide the amount of uses that we have with the population that we, this country have, we can see that we have a huge potential of growing. Uh, maybe not in Germany, but United States, Brazil, United Kingdom, they have huge population and they are less represented in, the, in our chart. And always the first uh, 10 are always the same. is Germany, United States, Russia, United Kingdom, Brazil, Italy, Poland, Spain, France, Australia, Netherlands, after that, is, is changing. We can see Greece, we can see Argentina, we can see uh, other countries that are changing uh, depending on the year. Yeah, this is more or less the, the, the conclusion that I try to express. And there is one very important missing bit here, OBS. Uh, our community is not downloads, is uh, OBS. In 2016, we, we had the data to, to basically show how many new people we see in, in OBS, how many people, how many people are contributing with package to OBS, but not this year, and this is on me, sorry. Uh, I think that there is something else that we need to do. I think that this um, way of gathering basic data is really, really useful for the project. Uh, I think that this is the kind of project that can be delegated to the community itself. I mean, uh, there is a privacy problem that we need to fix. This data is uh, restricted by several laws, so needs to be protected. But there is a mechanism to gather the information, to gather the relationship and the evolution of the users without breaking the privacy of the information that the IP or the UID can provide. And I think that it's really cool if we can normalize, if we can do this exercise every month, every quarter, or every period of time, because the community have a new tool to make decisions based on something real, that is the data. Uh, I want to put the example of uh, countries. Uh, we know that we are really important in Germany, but not how really important we are in Germany. And that points clearly that there is path to grow and maybe even translation that we need to prioritize. I don't know how well OpenSUSE is uh, translating Russia, but I really hope that it's really well translated in Russia because we have a huge amount of using for there. So this kind of decision, this kind of prioritization can be based on not intuitions, but in, in, in real data. Yeah, so basically that's the thing that I want to present was short, was fast. I don't know if you have any questions, something that I can explain a bit more. Oh, yeah, one, one question that probably I'm going to, to have is in this chart, uh, this one, mm, others that usually refers to very old distribution like the 
is blue, and we can see some baseline blue in 2014, November 2014. Uh, this is not, I mean, it's very easy to explain, is a fail in the regular expression. During this period of time, the project was in under very deep change, so we didn't respect too much the naming of certain things. So my regular expressions detect a new set or something, an installation that was there, but I am not able to deduce the version that is using maybe is factory or maybe is is uh, some distribution around every 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 version of OpenSUSE. But eventually there is a UID there. Uh, even though I'm not able to deduce the, the version. So I didn't remove that part because it's something real accessing some resource that we provide, even though I'm not able to deduce what is behind that. Yeah. So, questions? With the uh, country breakdown, um, would it be possible to publish a more uh, or slightly more generic breakdown so uh, by region just as an overview for you know Europe for Africa for Asia just to get a very quick glance and then you can break down into the country specifics um, that could also be quite useful to work out areas for targeting uh, and for some of the community involvement. Yeah, I think that this is a really good idea because uh, if we, uh, uh, Europe is Germany, United Kingdom, Italy, Poland, well, I don't know, Spain, France. So we, we have a good chunk of users that come from Europe. We have a good chunk that people that, uh, of users that come from as Asia and uh, North America and South America. Yeah, we can do uh, uh, more smart distribution of, I think that is really a good idea, yes. More, more, yeah, I think that is a good idea, but we can hide the fact that uh, the big chunk of Europe is going to be represented only by, by Germany. So this, this gives a chance to, this is detail, gives a chance to understand the, the weight of one country in relation with the rest. But this is something that we can provide, yes. I, with, with the architectural breakdown, are you looking at adding, um, metrics for the ports, so for PAPC, um, yeah. etc. It's there. I mean, it's in the database, it's there. But I didn't publish that information. But it's there. I see PowerPC, I see ARM, and, but I didn't provide this information. It's maybe something that we can do, yes. But uh, we don't have, I mean, do we have an official open source for ARM? Because I see I, the one for Raspberry Pi, and I, our PC is there, but we have something official that we can say, okay, this is, this is us. Uh, yes. So uh, we need to include yeah. that. Um, I mean, it, it's a bit more complicated compared yeah. to x86 because there's not a, uh, certainly for 32-bit ARM, so for ARM v7, there's not a single ISO image. Whereas for Leap on AR64, the, there is a single image for that. Yeah. So it should be easier to track. Yeah, everything that is missing here can be done because the information is there. But I didn't do that, so. Do you have any information or explanation why the release 11.1 .1 had such high download numbers? I have one. I have one theory that is there is a big relation between SLE 11 and 11 one. I think that is based in the same code base. I'm not sure about that, uh, but apart from that, no. I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know. But it's there. I mean, the data is there. We, we see that in 2013. We see that again in in 2016. So the data is real. The the IPs are different. So. Uh, maybe an alternative explanation, were there changes to uh, mirror brain or s changes in the mirrors, uh, the server setup that might have changed the log files? I s there are some gaps, I even you can see here some gaps, some missing 
period of time, this is fails in the servers, change between the server, because this information is not in a single place. It's distributed in, in three uh, Pontifex servers, three machines. So sometimes we have missing data. This missing data is represented with the absence of data, but the increase of amount of data is, I don't see a relation with a change in the infrastructure, but I don't know. Cool. So that's all.